Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be discussing about uh, building products in remote teams. So we have three guests with us today. We have uh, Ayan, Ayan Kanan. She was the team lead of Team Tribo in the recently completed Game of Learners. We have Makena Sandra and Sandra Cheng, who are also participants in the uh, team of uh, in the Game of Learners. So we will start with Ayan. She'll tell us more about what Game of Learners is all about. Then now she'll dive in into the different details of what the experience and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, I, oh, and in case you have any questions, you can post them on the Q and A section. We will answer them as we go on. Okay, thank you so much. So Ian, let me share your desktop. Yeah, your slides are live, so you can start. Okay. Um, hello, guys, guys and ladies. Um, I hope we're all well. We're doing well um, amid this uh, pandemic. Um, so I think uh, Bethany has already introduced me, but I guess I can do one more brief introduction of myself. Um, my name is Ayan Kinan. I am a student at Strathmore University, and I am pursuing computer science, and I am a final year. I was a team lead of Team Tribal Health um, during the during the Africa Development Center um, Game of Learners, uh, meaning that Game of Learners is a is a hackathon which was done by ADC. So maybe you can just dive in into uh, the content of how how to build a product and how to build a product effectively. Um, remotely. So I do know that some of the some teams have already been doing this for the longest time, but this was actually um, my second time working with a remote team and it took quite quite a huge effort and huge dedication from all of us. Um, maybe we can we can just. So one of one of the main key features here is a team and before I continue, um, maybe I can go back and define what Game of Learners is. Game of Learners is a five week hackathon stroke contest, which um, was supposed to be, is or was a very fun experience where people came and, and learned. So the whole purpose was to learn and to create a product. And that was the contest. How, how can you work as a team to create um, an end-to-end -end product, uh, an end-to-end -end product, or a minimum viable product that is. So one of the best, one of the key key things um, when I'm talking about this is teamwork. And without the team, I don't think there's there's much to talk about, or there's really um, there's really nothing to to look at. And uh, for me, I'm so glad because my team, we all finished. We all started the race and we all finished it all together. And that's 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 one of the biggest, biggest um, achievements. By the way, that's that's one of my biggest achievements, finishing as as one, starting as one and finishing as one. So effective team teamwork is quite important, not only for our project, but it's also important for our well-being as humans and as individuals. And I know for a fact that um, people are driven by their well-being. If something is stressing you, you wouldn't want to, to, to be doing that. So how can you make work easier for people and how can you collaborate and make everyone excited about the project? So clear direction and goals is one of the key features that um, key things that one needs to look at when when working on a particular project. So a well-defined plan and an end goal is very, very crucial because it it defines the whole work. Like 
this is what we need to do. It's defined. This is we need that we dashboard. We need this. We need this. Everything is 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 well and clear. And then also, um, clarity of purpose. What's the purpose of the project you're doing? Because you can you can have an end goal, but not have a clarity of purpose. So what's the clarity of purpose of of the project you're doing? Um, is it that the client requested for it, or or is it that you know, sometimes clients might, might not really, um, they understand very well on what they need, but they cannot comprehend it outwards in terms of technical matters. So it's up to you to 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 really um, engage the client in the clarity of purpose of the project that is being done. And then the last thing is proper communication. Proper communication is very, very crucial, and it 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 really it's the one which actually makes the whole team. In fact, if there is proper communication, proper communication starts with small things such as I want to be available. Can someone take over? Or um, I want to be able to make it at this time. Can um, kindly excuse me? Or even, or even um, I'm not able to do this. Can I get help? You see, proper proper communication. Like the whole team needs to just be um, quite open-minded. There's no there's no there's no judging. There's no there's no higher quani will GPI. So you see, like um, the whole the whole point of GOL was to learn and to learn from scratch. And the whole experience has been quite amazing because we all learned new things. You, you, uh, someone else comes with a bit of Angular. Someone else comes with a bit of um, PHP, uh, JavaScript. Everyone comes with a different languages, different frameworks they've worked with. But at the end of the day, you all need to work with one, one particular, one particular um, technology. One you need to like choose a few, and it might not be the one that you're very comfortable with. So. Let's let's go to task delegation. Um, task delegation is is quite important. Like for example, in my in my particular team, um, there was a new Scrum master for every single week, and and this helped us really. Like, if if you asked anyone in the group, uh, what are we doing right now? They are gonna tell you like this is what we're doing. This is what you're doing. Like there was no one who, who was left behind in the in the in the information with the information, or there's no one who didn't know what was happening at any point in time. So you see the the the, the part where we all we delegate work and we make everybody feel important and, and wanted in a team, it makes everybody feel responsible and 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 um be excited to and feel responsible and actually complete work on time so that by the time they come back to um, to our daily standups, you know, everybody already knows what they're supposed to present. And that was easy because I didn't have to tell everybody, now you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, no. There are people who are in charge of media. Um, there are people who are, who are in charge of techni technical, technical matters. Um, the, the, the other people who are in charge of uh, one was in charge of technical resources, another one was in charge of um, another one was in charge of just general resources on how another one was just in charge of general resources and and and, and technical skills and um, there's one person who was sending us um, content and research material. So at the end of the day, we had really everybody's task was correlated. And this helped out bring bring the best out of everybody because everybody was doing something that they that they really liked. Um, that's that's for a fact. So what are the crucial skills that one needs um, when when dealing with a team or when when building a successful product? The, the crucial skills include collaboration skills. Um, 
conflict management, planning and organization skills, communication skills. Yeah, so in terms of collaboration, um, what, what skills does everybody have? Remember you're all, you're all in a remote place where you're not meeting any phys phys physically. So everybody needs to be comfortable with what they're doing. And um, everybody needs to know what collaborative tool are we, are we using? Um, when when merging the when, when merging the project, or what time are we meeting per day? When when are we doing our, our daily standups? And what part does everybody do? What's everybody bring onto the table? Yeah, um, that was something really crucial. What is everybody bringing onto the table that will benefit the project? So when you put it like that, everybody will bring forth their best in terms of in terms of the skills that they have. Also, um, we know that there are a couple of stages in team formation uh, that also includes storming. So storming um, clearly defines conflict management and, and where conflict starts. And um, for me, we didn't have we didn't have any kind of conflict, uh, but I can say that there was the when you are deciding on the technologies to use, everybody had their own. So it was quite a hard time um, settling settling on one thing because you you skilled at this this person is skilled at this but at the end of the day we need to put trust in each other and and um, and work on work on what we've talked about what we've agreed on as a team so conflict may arise and and how how do we solve it how do we solve conflict for me, I didn't have any kind of conflict because we are all in touch. If you get proper communication, conflict is easily is easily um, solvable. And how do we how do we get back after? Sorry, my internet is bad. Um, how does one get the team back after storming phase? After what storming Kusana? Um, how how can we get back all of us and say that this is this is our team and we're still going to stand by this and we're going to complete this project? Um, that's that's the, that's the important fact and that's something that everybody needs to uh, put in con into consideration and also considering that everybody has their own personality. Which, if you're working as a team, there's no there's no way you're going to say this one will have to change her character. This one will have to will have to change her personality. We don't need this. We don't need this. No, as a, as the team lead, you need to put into consideration every single person. You need to work with everybody according to how they are. Understanding everybody is quite a key concept. And when you understand, you make everybody feel feel um, important and feel like they 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 are wanted in the project. So, so um, in terms of planning and organization skills, how do you plan effectively for a team? And how do we plan effectively for a team? And how does one make a proper scrum work plan, etc.? So, for each planning, for the planning, everybody needs to understand that. When you're planning, I mean, when you're a team lead or when you're a team member, you need to have proper planning and organization skills. Everybody needs to say, I'll just have to dedicate this time to to meet. Um, even with the even with the even with the daily standups, we we did have um, features and tasks and stories on the DevOps. How do we get to achieve all this within the time indicated? So for me, I I really it's all it all comes down to communication um when there's proper communication there is a uh, proper planning and organization so everybody already knows what part they're doing um we planned effectively at the beginning and even after planning and even after planning we still we still had we still had quite a lot um, changing, changing of strategies, 
and all that. So it was it was quite um, a lovely time, kind of um, changing changing our, our strategies with as, as the changes come in. So you need to also know, um, and you need to know, and you need to be open minded in terms of any proposed changes. So um, let me finish with my last quote. Um, Phil Jackson said that the strength in a team is each individual member and the strength of each member is the team. So um, let me just uh, go into this. There are some times which I as a team lead didn't feel like attending the meeting, a meeting probably because it was a whole five weeks. There was a time I didn't feel like attending a meeting, but I remembered um, I, I, I'm the team lead of this team. I mean, what kind of example am I setting? For, for my team for my team members or or um, things like um, my team really needs me to 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 also move forward or um, to to hear about for us to conclusively come up with our next plan so the, the strength in each individual member is comes from the team that is for sure and another thing um, I didn't mention uh, but I kind of uh, direct, indirectly rephrased on it is the fact that everybody needs to have respect for each other. At the end of the day, it's not. It comes down to the primary, our uh, primary, our uh, individual um, objectives, which is our mental well-being, and and our physical well-being. So even with that, um, you know, like at least like everybody finished and we were all well. No one got stressed. No one, um, no one, how can I even press this? But yeah, um, no one, no one was, was quite stressed about, about the project. So again, um, when you, when you, when you, when you kind of put the well-being of the people first, um, the, the product becomes a secondary, something secondary, and that's what should be the goal of each team prioritize the mental well-being or the well-being of the members as the primary goal of the team. And then um, the secondary goal can be the product. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Ayan. Um, let me, this is cliche, but yeah, you can go um, check out my LinkedIn at Ayan, uh, Ayan Kingan, and we can connect. Thank you so much, Bethany. Ayan, before you go, uh, can you tell us more about the product you guys built? Okay, um, so the product we built was um, was a telemedicine system, and uh, it had. Um, Accompanied with an IoT, I mean an IoT data storage band. So, um, how, what was happening is that the the telemedicine system was connecting the doctors and the patients virtually through um, through features like features like on app calls, um, on app text texting, and on app on app video yeah you can you can come you can video conference with um the doctor and then there was there was also a setting of appointments there was also setting of appointments there was also a mental health chatbot um and the 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 most amazing part of this system was that there was a wellness there was a there was a whole drop down on wellness and it talked about different how to, how how do you keep um, your 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 sanity? I mean, how how do you how do you stay well and how do you keep healthy? So it talked uh, it it has it has many many um, functionalities there. It has it has a mental health checker, um, general sy symptoms checker. It has a health advisor. It tells you this and this is wrong with you, or you need to see a doctor immediately. So it could diagnose um, things like COVID and using hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of data that is. So it could 99, I mean, almost 
98 point something percent um, correctly diagnose COVID. And another thing is that um, it has a really, really amazing, amazing emergency response. And here's the fun fact. So let's assume I call for an emergency service. So when you go when you go onto the emergency response um, and you just click on it, it quickly when you click on it, it, it quickly identifies the hospitals near you and it already gives you like um, pop ups like not really pop ups, but small tags on the map um, showing a call button and a text button. So this allows you to text that hospital and tell them like, hey, can you can you can, I mean, I'm emergency situation. Can you come pick me up or you can just text the hospital? I mean, I'm I'm in an emergency situation. Can you come pick me up and quickly it it tracks where you are and they have they send they send um they send the emergency respondents and for example if it's for minors um that's where the 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 band comes in and when they when they tap on the band they get they get the medical history of any child who's less than 15. so so I know it has it has quite a lot of a lot a lot of uh, logical things that I didn't want to go into and explain, but that that was our project in a nutshell. So there's someone in the chat asking if you can be able to demonstrate your product. Can you be able to demo uh, show us a small demonstration of what you guys built? Um, unfortunately, I, I can't trade right now because um, the whole link is down. Unless I can, I can, I can send back the, the link, and and um, maybe you can find it on the description of uh, this video once it's hosted on YouTube. Okay. Any any other person with any question for Ian? So there are no questions. So I will invite the next speaker. Mm, the next speaker is Makena Sandra. So let me first share her slides before she comes in. Okay. Oh no, it's supposed to be wrong slides, sorry. Just a minute. Uh, huh. Uh, give me a, uh, the, the, the challenge from the speaker side, so a few minutes.
So our next speaker will be Sandra McKenna. So she was part of Team Remedy. So so yeah, uh, Team Remedy. So McKenna, you can start off. Uh, hi, uh, I, uh, I hope you can hear me better, Ani. Yeah, yeah, we can hear Am you. Am I loading now? Yeah. Okay, so um, also, I'm going to be sharing my experience uh, about GOL, that's Game of Learners program that is being part of a team. So a little bit about myself. I I have an ENTG personality, which means that I'm extroverted, intuitive, uh, thinking, and I portray thinking and judgment type of personality. Um, that's just uh, that just goes to shows uh, that I'm a decisive person in nature, and I'm very particular about what it is that I want. And sometimes I can also be very strong-willed, and that has been perceived as either me being arrogant or not showing empathy. But I try my best to express my opinions in a way that will not hurt other people's feelings. I'm also an ambivert, which means I portray characteristics of both an extroverted person and introverted person. So, like during this time when we have this pandemic, I have not, yes, I have not really felt like going out. So it means I can be both introverted or extroverted. Um, I'm also, I'm also able to, I'm also an intern at DSA, which stands for Data Science Center for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. I'm an engineering student at the Dunkimathi University of Technology, which is in Nyeri. I'm studying electrical engineering. I'm passionate about communities, uh, both in school and also out of school. So I'm a part of several communities in my school and also outside. Uh, some of my hobbies are outdoor activities, such as nature walks and also I do a bit of singing but it's been a while since I I was able to to sing in public. Yeah I think I've been focusing so much on code. So a little bit about my team. I was part of Team Remedy during GOL and my team in these are my awesome teammates. There's Cindy, there's Dan, Jeff, and Josh, who was our team lead. So uh, in the team, I was working on the mobile app together with my teammate Dan. So we were working on building the RMD mobile app. So what exactly is RMD and what exactly did we build? We built a product and a culture. So RMD is a system or a set of tools and services which aims to bring uh, remote services to our users by offering services like remote consultation, drug delivery services, um, health information such as health tips, alerts, and first aid tips, and also other services like that enable you to call an ambulance, for example, in case of an emergency. So that's just uh, briefly what our um, our product is, and we are also building a, a culture that is social medicine, where talking to a doctor does not have to be such a tedious task. When you think of going to the hospital, you are thinking, "Oh my gosh, cues, um, medicine, um, blood." So we're just trying to find a way of how we can bring the the health system closer to the person so that when you're thinking of accessing health care it's a fast and convenient way and you can also do it at the comfort of your home so the structure of our system was we had a mobile app um that's for the users and the doctor and then we had the user 
the app. So with the mobile and the UCC, it allowed both the it allowed any type of user to use our system, regardless of the phone, the type of phone they have. So whether they had a, a smartphone or a feature phone, they would still be able to access the MD services. So our mobile app was built using the Flutter framework. We used uh, for the USSD app and the, and the SMS app, we use Africa Stocking platform. And the Windows app was built on C sharp, that's dot net. So this was not my first time actually building a product with a team, but it was my first time doing it uh, virtually. And it obviously was very different from what I was used to. That is working with my teammates in person where I can see them. Of course, you can see someone, but virtually it's, it's very, very, very different. And from my experience, um, the benefits of working remotely is that there are no geographical limitations, meaning that I could be able to work with my teammates regardless of the location they are in, Kenya, or even if they were not in Kenya, it would have still be possible for us to work together. And it's definitely more flexible that means I can be able to do my work at the most convenient time for me. So uh, as long as I get uh, my tasks done, that's, um, I think, yeah, Ayan was talking about um, task management. We are using Azure DevOps, which was a really, 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 really awesome tool, I must say. So now that I know my tasks for the week, I can be able to easily set on board time I will do my tasks. So um, another advantage I'd say of, uh, of, of, of virtual, of working virtually is that when you are definitely having your meetings, you don't have to be exactly the most formal attire. <laughs> because sometimes I would sleep so late and probably have a meeting in the morning. So I would just jump out of bed and just get on a call which is not possible when you're in person because you have to dress up and go and meet your teammates but also working in person does have its benefits like faster responses from your teammates you have better social connection um that means that it's easier especially for this for joel it was over working with new people so i feel like it would have been much easier for me if i could see them and get to know them better if it was in person and uh, when i talk about faster responses meaning like if i need uh, a response from a team concerning an area that i'm working on should i do this should i do a or b it's so much faster when they are there you can just ask them directly and they'll tell you do b but we, when you're working virtually you kind of have to send them a message or try and find uh, a time that's convenient for them and sometimes wait on my need to get this phone and also as far as maybe when we are um when i have a problem and i want someone to help me i i found it, it was much better when we were, when i was working in person with my teammates it was so much easier when they were there they could just like quickly look at my code and tell me to do this and do that but with actually um, what virtually or remotely you obviously have to schedule a meeting, share your screens. Yeah, so it's very, very, very long procedural process that you have to follow. And also for me, it's better motivation because I feed off a lot from people's energy. So if I'm seeing my teammates really work through the night, that also motivates me to definitely stay up and also work through the night. But when you're working remotely, you're practically most of the time by yourself. So you kind of have to motivate yourself. So um, my experience in Joel, some of my highlights or my happy moments were definitely the team meetings. Because in the meetings, we play games like Kahoot, would um, choose each other and do whatever it takes to distress, to also share if someone is probably going through a tough time and they are uh, not figuring things out with the college one another. So those are definitely things that I look forward to. 
five weeks with doctor probably she can be like a whole year or even six months and i'm not even joking like it was that good so within five weeks i did so many linkedin courses i read so many medium posts i i looked at so many different types of code yeah it was like a crash course the best crash course ever if i could do gl i would definitely do it again because of the amount of learning that i actually um was able to do and definitely also making progress like when you write your code and then it works and you see the results of your work and getting uh each week getting a step closer to finishing your product that was definitely a happy moment for me seeing that um yeah the learning and the work is actually paying off and obviously winning um gol was also a very really very big highlight for not only me but also my teammates but after those uh, very very strenuous five weeks we, are, we emerged as the top team and um different it was definitely a big highlight for me because well it was we did put in a lot of work or your network, you have any problems with the network, that's really slow down your work. and uh, a break or something but i remembered that i don't know like I, as a person i like to take on challenges so the fact that there were more challenges than i had expected would that does that now mean to give up like i feel like that's also a reflection of how life kind of is that you will be faced with challenges and sometimes it will not always be fair because i know some of the challenges i was facing like maybe work or some, some people are not facing that so it was definitely unfair on an unfair uh, playing ground but i feel it's that way for everyone in life so i was like okay i have these challenges but you know what i'm gonna make do with what i have i'm going to do what whatever it is that i can do so that even like even if i lose or even if uh, we do not win it it will not be because because I did not give it my best shot or because I gave up, it will be because it will be because of something else. So and another big challenge was obviously time. Yeah, this is actually like the longest competition, the hackathon or learning program I've ever been in. So I thought with five weeks it was actually a long time that that would be able to finish everything and even have like time to chill and like perfect our code and stuff like that but we were actually shocked that time did actually run out on us and we had to give up on some of the features we had intended to implement we may, may not have been some of the core features but and go another option so you really have to be open-minded especially when you're dealing with a team and also uh, the fact that 
sometimes what it is that you suggest may not always be what is implemented. So you always have to keep an open mind through the entire process. So uh, Bethany, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so okay. I just wanted to, to, to make sure you can. Yeah. Uh, also to stay calm, like, um, like I, I don't know. alone i want to be alone like at some point you feel like just leave me alone like let me be like um, but you have to in all especially when you're not you you're not maybe sometimes in good times with the teammates you really disagree on something and you have you are very you'll be very tempted to say a bunch of stuff which might not even be helpful it might not help anyone, it might not help the code run faster or, or the product will be built faster. So in such times, I just chose to be quiet, to stay calm. Yeah, if I feel like my words are going to hurt anyone or disrespect anybody or make anyone feel um, look uh, feel hurt or offended, I would just choose not to keep quiet, to just, just keep quiet and not speak. And yeah, and I feel like that really, really staying calm and then another thing is to try and understand others that's your teammates these are not machines sadly they have emotions yeah and they have feelings so you kind of have to to um learn their personalities and understand who they are so that you can know how to best communicate with them. And like I was saying, this is so much harder when it's remotely or virtually. It's not impossible because it's, uh, all, I believe like all the five teams were able to work together and finish our products and our projects by the end of the five weeks. So it does show that it's possible, but it's definitely gonna take effort from you. And also do not suffer alone. Definitely don't suffer alone within our team where if someone was going through something they'll cheer like if i'm experiencing a burnout or i'm tired or i'm, I'm having a, a blocker uh would definitely share with each other and that helped to keep us together as a team because if you do stuff alone and you feel like the rest really don't care i don't think you're really working in a team anymore but you're working by yourself uh, You not not only uh, are sharing code, but even life experiences together. Of course, there are boundaries, but just make sure that in the process of working together, don't suffer alone. Because as you suffer, it might affect your your work or effectiveness as a team member. And finally, is to remain hopeful. That's definitely it, especially when <laughs> yeah, your code is not running or you're having errors or yeah, things are just not working out. And probably your deadlines are closer than yeah, than you think. Remaining hopeful the entire time and is definitely has was definitely did help me a lot through the entire process that even though like things may not have been working out at some point, I was, I still remain hopeful. And that is, I think this was a major thing that I did learn. And yeah, and definitely uh, in a team, there's so much we can achieve together. And I feel like we should all, if you've never worked in a team, I um or collaborated with others before on something and that actually encouraged you to try it out there's like what i'm saying there's so much you can do together that because i i will not lie if zero l was an individual game i do not think would have been able to pull off the kind of projects that we were able to working individually so we were able to do so much more uh working together so yeah Thank you. That is yeah, briefly about my experience. Yeah, any you can post your questions to San uh, McKenna. You can post them on the chat. So far, there's no question currently for you, McKenna.
the question we had was for Ayan, but so let me ask. Uh, you've already talked about what went well, what you achieved. Uh, will you do this again if this? Will you do it again if the chance comes? Uh, of course, like I said, I would definitely do Joel again. I will not lie. Like I said, it's not only it was not only a competition. It was a learning program. Like I like I'm telling you, there's so many things that I learned from my teammates and from now being in a, such a space where you have to produce results or when you're under pressure to produce results. There's so much that you learn. I would definitely do it again if. <laughs> If there was Joel this um this coming month I would, or next month, yeah, yeah, next month, I would definitely do it again. It's yeah, it's something that this is a and this one who is probably in university would have a chance like that to be in such a program. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, McKenna. So I think we will move on to the next speaker. Uh, the next speaker is also called Sandra. So let me switch slides, then we can get back to it. Give me one minute. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, everybody. Um, so, um, hello, everyone. I'm Sandra Cheng from the Multimedia University of Kenya. I am currently in my final year I'm taking a degree in um, applied optics and lasers. This is basically just it involves a lot of physics, mostly the physics of light. We work with lenses, fiber optics. We look into lasers and also holograms. And it's something I really like. Um, I personally, my personality is, I'm very introverted. I hardly talk to people I don't know. It is one of the things that made it, made working a very new experience because I don't work in teams unnecessarily. <laughs> But it was one really good experience because I am deeply interested in making changes and making differences in the world where I live today. And it's that cannot be possible if you don't work with other people to already build up on the products and the and the systems that already exist. So I'm um, joining this hackathon was one of the best decisions I've made in the recent past, and it exposed me to a lot um, a lot of things. Um, yes, and basically I applied because of my love of adventure. I really like experience doing things I've never done before. I have never worked in a, I have never actually been on any other hackathon. <laughs> and yeah, even programming was a bit, it's a bit of an adventure for me because I took it up not too long. It's turning out to be a really fun adventure. Um, on my team, I primarily worked with the part of um, my role on the team was to do the design. I'm yeah, they're mostly used Adobe XD, and yeah, I was part of the front end team building some specific features for yeah, I was building a few features here and there for the app, and then mostly just working on the front end design and finding finding information to put on our pages like the images for some of our services and some of the procedural aspects of things yeah those were my primary tasks and they were absolutely wonderful um next step we're going to look at the product what we actually created as team mizizi um yeah team mizizi worked on providing a medical app which 
um, actually it was a progressive web application. This simply means that it would be hosted on the internet, but it would be easy, easy to load on all kinds of devices, all sizes of devices, whether it's a, smart, a smartphone with a very low random access memory capacity, or whether it's a desktop or a computer, a really good one, all of them can be able to use our application. And that was one of the key aspects we looked into while developing our product, something that would be accessible to all people in all the different locations. Um, therefore, we developed the progressive web application. On this web application, we primarily, yeah, we focused on creating us an easy to use front end design and focused on providing three key aspects of services on our application. These are like we would provide free services which would be part of our initiative to empower the cities. Then like we would have the trivia section the we had the trivia section whereby we focused primarily on user engagement. You can see this part at the top um where actually yeah on the image on the slide you can see the the picture at the top whereby we have the user engagement section where we would have the test your knowledge section and the other section which was a chatbot which would mostly just it would ask you questions and you just take shots at the at a bunch of choices and you would have fun and then the other part would tell you some fun facts about health our other key aspect of um of free services to our users in order to engage them was the section below that where we had the the COVID-19 updates currently but it was mostly a section we had designed to update people on whatever disease they were currently fearing or whatever whatever thing was really big and trending that was affecting a large percentage of Kenyans at any point in time so that people can have the information in this section we would have a heat map, a map which would show you the areas where the disease is really spread out, like where many people have it, and it would also help you to get places where you can be text, you can be, um, you can be tested for free, affordably within your region. Therefore, you would have a map, map assistance, and you would be able to see what you want to find. Like you would be able to find the testing centers near you, and you would additionally be able to see what areas the disease is very common in so that you can take all the necessary precautions the next part for our free initiative was the second part which is slightly cut out but it is our first aid first aid section at that point we would offer first aid information for free for all the people who are subscribing to our application so that they can be able to treat any problems they might actually come across immediately without having many problems, without suffering, without like having to log in or to find the procedure in a very difficult manner. We had divided the section very comfortably into various parts and it was so easy for a user to be able to access the first aid information provided. Um, then we would have we had a symptom checker. The symptom checker is where you would log in all your symptoms and you would get a diagnosis which was most probable as to which you would get advice for the procedures to take on like in order to get treatment or what home remedies you can use the final part was the final chemist section which was the section where we would actually partner with different organizations which deliver medicine and sell medicine so that people can be able to see places near them which offer them medication and places which deliver and places which are affordable they could partner with people who would actually give some vouchers for some people suffering from certain common diseases so that you can just get a voucher for the medicine you require without having to pay too much money yes yeah, so my experience on the game of learners challenge um the game of learners challenge and basically it had a lot of it was a great opportunity to meet with various developers from across the country and various universities with different working styles, with different skill sets, and people who basically who can be connected to academic. It was so interesting just talking to people who have a perspective that is so different from you, a working style that is not like your own, and people who are motivated by various things in life. And that was a 
great opportunity. And therefore, in this opportunity, I got to learn about different people's working working styles and I got to experience different skill sets and how they play into making a team successful. Um, and that was something that is very important so that you can be able to um, pick up a lot of good vibes and good knowledge. Like you get to know a lot of stuff about how things can be done in an easier way or a different way in from how Yeah, just learning about the way, learning a lot of different technologies. Like when I got on this, I knew nothing about React, which is something we were using. I hadn't used it before. But getting to see people using it and then you're shown, like you log on, you share your screen, someone helps you out. You get to see how it's working. You go to the LinkedIn learning vouchers were given. You go, you check out some some course, you find the solution, something that has really been bothering you, that has been an, a mind-blowingly awesome experience, like it has been so good. So the challenge is that we've actually had some, because uh, no, nothing comes without having a few bumps on the road, a few challenges here and there that can actually make people feel like giving up, but if they're not giving up, is actually the most important part of any challenge. Um. Yeah, so, Basically, the first challenge we had was sometimes you find that you're connecting to the internet and then like you're on a very important call, you're explaining something and you're seeing like you're getting the help you need. And then all of a sudden, your call drops. Wow, that was, that was difficult. But then it was something that actually got better with time and calls stopped dropping. People, communication became so much better. And yeah, you could actually stay very comfortable on the calls. Then the other part was like encountering technologies that you haven't worked with before, lack of experience. Well, that was a challenge because you f I found that we were working with some technologies like we were working with the React framework and then I had hardly any experience with it. I just knew about it, but I hadn't like tried it out. But I knew I could actually learn and I knew that it would be a great move for our team because it would be very good at rendering our application on the web. So that part was a bit of a challenge. So it, it made us even tighter to, to, to become even like closer because you would have to call up your teammates at all hours of the night or any time. You're just like, hey, this isn't working and this feature needs to go up. And then yeah, you get the help you get the motivation you require because sometimes your computer is acting up and then you're like ah, you're almost giving up like the first time I was trying to load some scripts and then it just wasn't working and then you're trying you're trying and then it keeps on doing the wrong thing so you're just like almost giving up and then your teammates are there they motivate you they tell you that this can work and then shortly after you just keep on working at it and then a few minutes later it's just perfect working so working in teams actually gave that wonderful experience because sometimes when you're working alone, it's very easy to get demotivated and to wind up um, dropping out, just stopping to work on your product or postponing things. But with a team, you get motivated, you get pushed, you call people at all hours, and then you get the help you require. Additionally, we had the issue of varying schedules whereby various people had various different schedules with with classes and some with a few work activities here and there and then it's just like finding it a bit hard to be able to meet everyone for the stand-up meetings and all that <clears throat> and that was a bit of a challenge that we were able to overcome with time with making compromises for our teammates because it's very important to when you're working with different people with different personalities very important to learn how to make a compromise on your time it's important to be able to learn how to make decisions that will impact your team positively and 
yeah, to just yeah, just bend a few of your rules here and there, like you like sleeping early, maybe you might have to sleep a bit later. You wanted to do this at this time, can you do it a bit earlier or a bit later so that your team can be able to meet constantly and to be able to keep in touch and to work in a manner that will promote growth and prosperity within the team and actually like getting feedback from other people when I designed the pages. Like sometimes you make a feature and then like when I was and then you ask people how does this look and then someone sees something that you hadn't seen before. Like working in teams is very important. It was very wonderful in in spite of the fact that it was a remote team and it was a bit hard to get hold of people sometimes because you get to ask like how what do you think about this how do you feel about this and then you get the wonderful feedback that you, you require and yeah it's it was a very good experience um now on to the tools we used on the product on the product we designed team is easy use various products on our team on our project we actually divided the team into people who would primarily handle the front end aspect of of the of the web application and people who would handle the back end aspect of the team application. This would be easier with even scheduling meetings and yes, then you get to meet up both ends and collaborate and fix your APIs and something and it was a really good experience. So we had the tools like um, the front end tools were like Adobe XD and React, um, React Strap where we made the, the front end part of the product like this and then like our mentors were very instrumental in this aspect because already it's hard enough to coordinate and meet but then sometimes you're failing to coordinate and you, you're missing coordination because of the aspect of team work or team work whereby like someone is used to doing things this way they're used to using just this framework and maybe they write their code a certain way but then for you guys to be able to understand it and to be able to design products and to, to be able to design features that will actually combine you actually have to focus on um, improving our working, your working styles and working in sync and doing the things the same way like not one person decides to use a different kind of system to load data onto the front end section then another person uses an API that wouldn't work well so the mentors came in over very instrumental at that point in time because they helped just to be able to like decide to help us to work together and actually to help us to streamline our work such that we were working in sync and coordinating with each other as opposed to working in the diverse style and submitting code that cannot come together to form what we had visualized before. Additionally, it was important to learn how to, to work with um, disappointments sometimes because sometimes the sprint is over and not all features are implemented as you hoped they would be. And at that point in time, you're feeling kind of bad, but you just have to keep working so that the next sprint can be so much better than the last one, so that you can even have additional features so that you have both sprints features working perfectly by the end of the next sprint. So yeah, that was important. Yeah, so we used Adobe XD for the design of the front end, and then we coded it in using React. Um, Python was used for the back end and we posted it online using the Azure credits provided. The insight gained. Um, basically, these are things I have spoken of before already on this call, but these are the primary things that we gained. Like I got to learn the benefits of teamwork whereby I told you get to learn about new technologies and learn about different working styles and learn in the soft skills required to be able to interact with people who have different personalities and still understand each other and be kind to each other and understand like even if someone doesn't know how to do something just help them out next was the learning how to work with deadlines um it's common for students for young people actually for students even sometimes you're a bit late with your work and then like maybe you can speak to a lecturer or something, like some people do that. But here you have rigid deadlines and you're not going to be the one to let your team down by failing to
wants institutions and communities to commit to such a decision. So it is for them to present an activity for what, what they were supposed to do when they stood in the back end. When some institutions are best practice to find that some people are missing meetings or failing to know their responsibilities for that particular week. Yeah, it was not held this. Therefore, when you have effective communication, you get to know where someone else is with their work and what they require of you to be able to make this the feature success, to make the application a success, and to make the entire team successful in, in the development of the product. Then, additionally, we got to understand new concepts in software development. To people, it, it takes a long time for people to learn various things, and then when there's hardly any pressure, sometimes you just take way too much time on something that you could learn very fast. Um, learners program was it was accelerated learning for the entire team. We got to do things we haven't done before. We got to experience um, languages that some of us haven't worked with, okay, frameworks that some of us haven't worked with before. And you just get to learn so many new things and you get to learn how to work with, with other technologies. Yeah, and not to give up even when it goes very badly and you just feel like giving up. You just remember your team is out there. It's working hard. Everybody is working. Everyone is rooting for you. Just keep on working. Keep on trying. It will come along. It will be perfect. Just work a bit harder. That was one of the one of the greatest insights again like just keep on doing it regardless of how it's looking just try and try it will be perfect in a few minutes in a in a few hours it will just come along well yeah um and therefore that's the end of my presentation and finally i just want to thank you all for listening to me and to remind you that you'll miss everything that you, if you don't take a chance you stand to you don't stand to lose anything like basically you just need to take all the chances you find um try new things and just they will work out for the better and you'll miss a hundred percent of the shots you never took in simple terms so yeah just try new technologies and working in remote teams was a very wonderful experience and yeah we'll do it again and yeah it's yeah, doing it again with this kind of knowledge uh, it will be a lot more fun but it has been perfect as it was and i would trade the experience for anything thank you thank you so much uh sandra thank you so much uh so there's a question so you found ways of doing things easier so how how did you find like give practical examples like one or two things Sandra. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, before Sandra is back, let me let me ask Ayana a question. Ayana, are you still there? No. Yeah, Sandra, you're back. So there's a question. Uh, there's a question. Uh, okay you found you found ways of doing things easier so can you give practical examples of like which things okay so for me before i hadn't worked with react and i'm fairly new to programming like i was just working on very basic stuff in javascript and then i was beginning to work with this framework with react struct and then react struct is exactly the construct and then getting my getting all the scripts in order like getting the boilerplate in order so then you write stuff and then you write it with, out of context like maybe you forget to call a class name that and then you miss stuff and maybe like at some point i was integrating an api and then i had failed and used some some names that I thought like I had mistaken some of the names and then I was really wondering why it's not working and at that point in time I was having connectivity issues so I couldn't ask my teammate um, what is going on here what what am I missing 
Yeah, so at that point in time, I wasted so many hours before I realized that it was just simple as calling functions in the wrong way, yeah, calling something the wrong way, and then it just fails to run. So, yeah, that was a good example. Additionally, what else? Yeah, so and I haven't designed an app before. I haven't even tried to make it look good or anything. And this was my first time doing that for my team, and I was being that against it. So, like, I knew I could basically design stuff and I'm not particularly bad at simple artworks. But here you have to actually think about how you work with this technology and how you'll make this look this way. Although that was a very small hurdle and I was able to overcome it very quickly. Okay, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can post them before we end. So Ayan, are you still in the call? Yeah. I think yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's a question for you. So you mm -hmm. won, uh, as part of uh, JOL, you won an award as the best media category. So how are you able to ensure that everyone was able to submit their videos on time without being too pushy? Um, actually, uh, uh, just um. A fun fact is that I never reminded them ever reminded them to upload their videos. And when when everybody feels like they have a responsibility to the team, they're going to do what is right. Yeah. So even when that even when the, the time was when we were there, in fact, even our daily stand ups really helped us because um we only used to do gol work um for one hour a day that's uh, five days a week so um it was five to ten hours a week technically so after that like when, when i'm doing our daily stand-ups um if if uh, when i update my video i just text i just text i just text in the in the in the uh, okay, I just text in the in our meeting chat that um, I have uploaded, and you know, like in fact, even it used to be uh, very very fun because um, many more many more of my group members used to submit among among the first ones. Like immediately to um, the week starts, I mean the uh, the week starts or uh, the day for the sprint media submission comes, they they've already submitted before like like midday thursday because thursday is when we used to update our media by 12 they used to have updated because um i i put i put this rule um that we are all here for a purpose and a whole we are all here for a season so um let's just work all together make sure everything is successful i mean we have nothing to lose so um, let's just put our, food, our our best foot forward, other than regretting onto why we didn't, why we were not so outstanding. So it was okay. personal. It was personal driven mostly. Well, that, that that is amazing. So I don't think we have any other questions left. Thank you so much. So let me read some of the comments that you guys have written to the speakers. So there's one from uh, uh, most of them are from Anonymous. So Anonymous is saying thank you so much, Makena, for sharing. There's also one from Zedi. She's saying uh, Sandra. I think Sandra Cheng, you you've had a very good presentation. There's so much insights she's gained. Thank you. There's also another one for Sandra. Both of our our participants are called Sandra. So. Yes, so Sandra, like, uh, there's also good work. Everyone is just, but well, then there's a comment. Uh, you could also look for ways to look at the legalities of the projects with regards to taking them further. So yeah, we'll look into that. So thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Thank you so much, ladies and uh, the gentlemen who joined us today. So we'll end the call here. Uh, for any follow-up, uh, any questions, you can give us feedback. I have post posted a link. You can give us feedback about the event, what you've learned. And if you want to come back to the event, just click this link, it will still be there.
Uh, I'll share it on YouTube later on this next week, but for now you can just come back to the link and check out the video. So thank you so much uh, and have a very lovely night.